So today I wanted to talk about the recent housekeeping set from the band No Man. And, you know, I've been rather vocal on this channel about my admiration for the work of Tim Boness. And, of course, Porcupine Tree are maybe the defining progressive rock band of the 2000s. But there's something very special about Boness's work with Wilson in No Man that mixes... Uh, rich sonic texture, thoughtful, detailed songwriting, and emotive vocal performance in a totally unique way. Now, that reputation is particularly built on the string of albums they did, starting with Flower Mouth in 1994, especially on the last three albums they did before A Long Hiatus, Returning Jesus, Together with Stranger and Schoolyard Ghosts. But uh, the housekeeping set covers the period from 1992 to 1994, when they were signed to the label that was then called One Little Indian, the release of their early singles through the album Flower Mouth. This is an era that is somewhat less beloved than the mid and later work, and until now it hasn't really seen a lot of reissue attention. It's been difficult to find on streaming. This set makes that period more available to a broader audience. As always, I'm Hans from Electric Brain, Electric Shadow. We are a contemporary art rock project mixing aspects of prog rock, post-punk, and uh, post-rock. Check out a playlist of our best work in the description of this video. So what did No Man sound like in the early 90s? Well, they were very early 90s. It's funny because the booklet for this box refers to the music as sounding out of its time, uh, out of step with its era. And that's an interesting thing to read because the production style is actually incredibly of its time. Their sound during this period is very rooted in early 90s electronica, using samples and drum machines and keyboards in ways which were cutting edge in 1992, but which to modern ears can feel a bit like an artifact, in much the same way that a lot of 80s production does. And for the most part, other than a bit of flower mouth, there's really none of the prog rock influence that would define Wilson and Boness's later careers, um, aside from maybe a small number of ambient excursions. Otherwise, this is, on some level, almost definitionally early 90s pop music. Except what is out of step with early 90s pop, and probably what the, the booklet for this set had in mind in saying they were out of their time, is Boness's passionate vocal style, his unironically poetic lyrical eye. You know, one version of the early single, Days in the Trees, substitutes the vocal line, or removes the vocal line, and substitutes a monologue from uh, the show Twin Peaks. And I think that's incredibly appropriate because while this music doesn't have the surrealism or the quasi-50s aesthetic of Twin Peaks, uh, Boness does have that show's interest in extreme emotional states running the spectrum from absolutely fervent love and devotion all the way to abject despair and abuse. What's also out of step with early 90s is the presence of the electric violinist Ben Coleman, who adds instrumental virtuosity and psychedelic flourishes to what would otherwise be kind of a stilted, inorganic sound. And there are also some bits of guitar from Wilson that sound like they could have been ported over directly from the earliest Porcupine Tree, which was contemporary to this work. So the tools and the surface-level style of the music are very dated and programmed and artificial, but its heart is, you know, furiously pumping the warm blood of the timeless romantic. And the mix of those two elements is what gives this period of no man its identity, uh, and perhaps also at the same time imposes some barriers to entry. I assume that at this point in history, most people who might be interested in this set or the era of this band are going to be coming from a prog rock background. And the fact that this sounds so completely like early 90s electronica might drive some of those people off. Some may also be put off by the kind of over-the-top melodrama of a, a lot of the lyrics here. Uh, I'll admit, I am personally a huge No Man fan, and even I find that, you know, when I come to uh, the music from this era, it takes some time for me to kind of adjust to its wavelength and feel connected to it. But, you know, once you do, there's really nothing else like it, and it's a treat to have this much of this material. Disc one here is the early singles compilation Love Size and Entertainment. Let me play you a representative song from that. I see you crucified. I want you to 
break me. Disc 2 is their debut album, the title of which is maybe the single most representative thing of the kind of unwinking seriousness and drama of this stuff. That title being Love Blows and Love Cries, A Confession. Crying in the morning, staring out through the clouded pain. No takes to screaming without warning. Disc 3 is a collection of uh, some other singles from around the time, notable for having a couple of songs that include appearances by Richard Barbieri, Mick Karn, and Steve Jansen, then uh, formerly of Japan. Of course, you know, later to be involved in other projects with both people. Disc 4 is their second album, Flower Mouth, which begins expanding their sound with longer songs, thicker textures, appearances by Robert Fripp and Mel Collins. And Disc 5 includes their radio sessions from the time, including some acoustic pieces. The rain fell soft on the So that's the music. Uh, the other thing to say is about the packaging, which is an absolute treat. You know, this comes packaged as a large format book with the discs in the front and back flaps, and the book itself is a comprehensive history of this period of the band with a wealth of photos and clippings, all the other scene-evoking miscellanea you could ever want. Their art style during this period is quite appealing, with a kind of a fine art mentality and a persistent sapphic undercurrent. And uh, modern fans, I think, will be quite amused by all the photos of Bonessa's teased giant mullet perm and Wilson's defiant pout. So the big question here is, do I recommend you buy this set? You know, if you're interested enough in Wilson and Boness to be watching this video and you don't already have all this material, or if you just have Flower Mouth, which is, of course, the best known, the most characteristic of their later work, easiest to find in general, I would say unambiguously, you know, pick this up. This is a unique chapter in the history of two of the giants of... I was going to say contemporary progressive music, but, you know, um, progressive music that's been uh, over the last 30 years or so. And like I said earlier in this review, while it can take a little bit of time to adjust yourself to what they're doing here, once you do, its melodic and emotional qualities really do become legitimately addicting. You can get it from Burning Shed for about $60 plus shipping, and, uh, you know, this is more than worth it that cost. It has that quality that the best box sets do of being enough music to really be immersed while not necessarily being an overwhelming amount or what might eventually become a chore. Now how about if you already own most of this music? Well, when I got into No Man back in 2018, I picked up Flower Mouth, which has been, you know, easily available, and then spent some time seeking out the relatively affordable copies of Love Size, Love Blows, and the Heaven Taste EP. So aside from a few stray singles, the radio sessions are the only thing that's new here. And honestly, you know, the radio sessions, this is heavily programmed music, which inevitably isn't going to sound that different when it's done live. Uh, some of the radio sessions are acoustic, but, you know, the acoustic arrangements are kind of often less texturally interesting. So I don't even know really how often I'll go back to the radio session disc although there may be delights there I haven't quite figured out or, you know, things to appreciate there that I've missed on the first few listens. But, you know, like I mentioned, the booklet is beautiful, captures the feel of this era quite well. The remastering is excellent. Uh, here are a couple of clips from the song Drink Judas from Love Size. Uh, first, the original master from the original release 30 years ago, and then the uh, remaster with this set. Retreat into beauty can't stand the light. 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 Here are a couple clips from uh, a song from the Love Blows album, which again show um, some of the changes in the new master. Love, love. Love me. 
So the remastering here, I think, does give both of those songs and, you know, the equivalent albums that they're on uh, a notably fuller, thicker sound without being overinflated or killing the dynamics. And there is something satisfying, really satisfying, about having this whole era compiled comprehensively in one place, the music and the surrounding history. And uh, I don't know. I like having this. It's a good thing to see on my shelf. And um, I don't know if I'll hold on to the individual copies. Uh, not sure how much value they have now that the set has kind of supplanted them for collectors. But, you know, um, if you're on a limited budget, you already have this material. You may find that there are better uses of your $60. But um, by the same token, you know, if you can't afford it, I think if you're a fan of the band and of this period, it is a great thing to look through and a, just kind of a good way to appreciate what was done by this era of No Man, which I think in a way really, among many other things, uh, gives you an interesting perspective on the last couple of Steve Wilson albums, which in some ways kind of take the idea of this period, return to it, and build on it with some additional tools. I would definitely order it through Burning Shed rather than pay the higher price that's being asked for on Amazon. Uh, and of course, you know, you can get it now through Burning Shed, but I believe it's not released in America until March. As a quick aside, I do have to acknowledge the recent release of the album Swagger, which collects some early recordings prior to their being signed to a label. This is kind of a louder, more raw version of the same style. It's an interesting curio. Uh, I haven't reviewed it here in full because it's the kind of release that, you know, if you're aware it exists, then you probably already have it. But you know, I, I can't do this without mentioning that that came out at the same time. Thanks for your attention, as always. I'll see everybody next week. Uh, my motivation is always teetering on the brink of non-existence, so I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel. While you're at it, check out Electric Bay and Electric Shadow here on YouTube via the link in the description.